Hello friends, uh, welcome to yet another video on Risk in Financial Services exam of Indian Institute of Banking and Finance. Uh, in this video, I will take you through 15 multiple choice questions. Uh, these questions are from the book whose cover page you can see here, which is Risk Management book. This particular book can be useful both for the CAIIB exam as well as for risk in financial services exam. Well, this video will not take you through what are the key aspects of the exam. Rather, I will take you through some of the key questions that you can work on parallelly with me to answer them and also see the video at a later stage to check how much you know about this particular chapter. But may I request all of you to please subscribe to my channel and like my video. Also, please share this channel with your friends and your colleagues. Kindly note that this is a free of cost resource available to you and you can save your effort and time by watching this video. Also, you can watch other videos on this channel and take advantage of that. Please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. So with this, I move ahead to the chapter which is unit 11 in the book measurement of credit risk i'm sure credit risk is a very important topic from the risk management perspective but measurement of credit risk is much more uh, critical because it quantifies the credit risk so in this context which is the quantification of credit risk i have created some very important questions which is which is uh, very well aligned to this uh, chapter and the topics of this chapter. So let me take you to, through the first question, which is here now on the screen for you. I'm sure you will be able to solve this, but let me first take you through this. What exactly is this question? So which of the following is not a driver for measurement of credit risk? Which means when you measure credit risk, what are the key variables that you would require or which are the key uh, factors that you would require? So obviously, you will require probability of default. There is no doubt on that or there is no doubt about that. You will require loss given default. Now, what is loss given default? Loss given default means that if there is a default, how much value will be lost on a loan or on a credit? It is opposite of recovery rate, which means if you are able to recover 100% of loan, the loss given default will be zero. The third element, which is also true, is exposure at default which means if the default is happening what is the loan outstanding right so exposure at default is basically calculated through a formula but to make the concept simple i am just talking about the, uh, the outstanding loan amount so since one two three are correct nature of default is not what we consider while we uh, uh, calculate the credit risk through a formula which is pd multiplied by L GD multiplied by EAT. That gives us the expected loss. Let us move to question two, which is which of the following issuers will have zero default probability? Now, this is a very important question because most of the time people feel that uh, uh, there are instruments which will give you zero default risk, right? The fact of the matter is that even government uh, is not supposed to have zero default risk because there are instances in on which government uh, have defaulted okay and uh, people have faced consequences of that so neither government nor high rated corporate nor municipalities actually it's very important for all of us to note that zero default risk probability is not applicable at all irrespective of the type of the issuer so the answer would be d once again we'll move on to question number 3 which is Default probability increase with the time as uncertainties increase. Is this, a, is this a statement true or not true? Obviously, for a shorter period, the default probability is less. It is as simple as that. What is the probability that someone would default in one day vis-a-vis -vis the probability that someone would default in 10 days? Obviously, one day the probability will be much less and in 10 days it will be higher. It will be higher even for 10 years uh, compared to one year because uncertainties would be more. So the answer for this is true, right? This takes us to question number four. 
which of the following type of loss is not included while we are calculating loss given default so now you can relate it to the question one which we have solved okay so loss of principal is definitely included because whatever principal amount is there has to be included the carrying cost of non performing loans also have to be included so this will also be included collection and legal charges will be included but we do not include future interest income while we are calculating the loss given default because it is at a point of time and whatever is the accumulated interest till then that will alone will be considered so we have done the question, four questions i hope you are with me on this and i hope you are finding it useful we move on to quiz 5 which of the following formula explains expected loss so how do we calculate expected loss do we consider maturity do we consider recovery rate what do we consider so it's very simple answer b c and d are not correct what is correct is pd into lgd into ead which means we take into consideration three factors what is the probability of default what is the loss given default and what is the exposure at default all these three factors together will give you expected loss so multiply the three one would be percentage probability of default is you know it's like 0 to 1 which means 0% to 100% loss given default is uh, basically an uh, again an a uh, percentage because if uh, uh, the loss given default is 100% that means everything will be lost and then we have ead ead is an amount it's an exposure at default which means it's a amount value and not a percentage value okay move on to question number 6 now dash 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 capital can be expressed as a protection against unexpected future loss at certain confidence level the answer for this is the economic capital please remember the regulatory capital cannot be the answer here because regulatory capital is the capital that you calculate to cover loss at a certain for a certain you know uh, uh, predefined parameters unexpected losses uh, are considered uh, or calculated uh, and then economic capital for that is kept right so the answer here would be economic capital regulatory capital does not get covered and minimum and expected are just two more examples they do not have relevance in terms of the bank's credit risk factor the question number 7 is which of the below mentioned formula explains pricing of a loan in a bank so how do banks arrive at the loan pricing so they take into consideration cost of funds which means how you have raised the deposits uh, <clears throat> overheads which they have to incur as a cost on employee expenses and other related expenses credit risk premium which means if you are a borrower and your credit quality is not very good then there will be a premium that you will have to pay and finally the profit margin so all the four factors which have been mentioned in the example b added together will uh, help a bank find out the you know formula for pricing a loan in the bank all these four have to be added no subtractions at any point of time okay so uh, <clears throat> you will have to take that into consideration unfortunately what has happened is that i have put here uh, the this particular number actually this should have been the answer so my apologies we will not consider this this is wrong answer okay so we'll take go ahead with the a not with the b so in order to ensure that we are uh, correct i am just marking it with a red ink so that you don't consider this to be the answer you consider this to be so all four added this has one minus sign the question number 8 is ra roc allocates a capital charge to a transaction or a line of business so risk adjusted return on capital ra roc allocates a capital charge to a transaction or a line of business at an amount equal to maximum unexpected loss over one year on after tax basis right that's how raroc calculates it what is the approximate level of confidence used for capital charge calculation this is 99% so we'll take 99% to be the answer here uh, the answer continues to be 99% for eighth let us move to question number 9 which of the following statements is not true about unexpected loss which means if uh, uh, there are multiple statements which are true but there could be one statement which is not true so unexpected loss is the potential for actual loss to exceed the expected loss which is a true statement it is a measure of uncertainty inherent in a loss estimate okay so <clears throat> that's also true okay 
banks and financial institutions can suffer losses uh, which would be uh, more than expected loss during economic time economic uh, uncertainties or economic downtime so that's also correct so banks and financial institutions basically uh, uh, suffer losses which are more than the expected loss so you would have calculated a loss but your loss may exceed that unexpected loss is the benchmark for calculating regulatory capital this is not the right answer so unexpected loss is not the benchmark to calculate regulatory capital so that's your answer uh, question d we move on to question 10 which is quiz 10 which of the following confidence level is used to calculate economic capital so previously we looked at 99 percent but we can have break up like 99.969798 actually all three are considered so we will go with the answer and uh, as all of the above now remember one thing 99 percent is a generic estimate but we can make it precise and say we are calculating it at 99.969798 we never say it at at a hundred percent quiz 11 uh, which is with what would be the recovery rate if the loss given default is 70 percent remember recovery rate is just opposite of loss given default so if loss given default is zero percent recovery rate is hundred percent if loss given default is 100% recovery rate will be zero right that's what i'm trying to say uh, here because the loss given default is 70% recovery rate would be 30 so the summation of the two should be equal to 100 that's the calculation that we have to know quiz 12 which of the following is not the right way for measuring lgd of an instrument okay instrument here means a bond instrument or any other you know financial instrument so market lgd is correct Walkout LGD is correct, implied LGD is correct, but there is nothing called as an unpaid LGD. So unpaid LGD would be not the right way. Question number 13, which of the following is the right combination for calculating MCLR as per RBI as mentioned in the book? So if we see this example, we will consider factors such as marginal cost of funds, negative carry on CRR. Remember, CRR is something which banks have to keep with RBI and they don't earn any interest from the bank. So marginal cost of fund, negative carry on CRR, operating cost and tenor premium. So all four factors will be taken into consideration and that's why answer would be B here. Uh, next one, 14th question. The undrawn balances are converted to notional outstanding with the help of credit conversion factor. So whatever is your undrawn balance, which will be typically applicable in cases such as your cash credits. Okay. So what this, why is this done? This is used to calculate what we call as the exposure at default. So if you want to find out exposure at default, you will have to convert them. Uh, for some of the loans, you don't have to do it like, like a home loan. For home loan, there is no undrawn amount. Wherever there is an undrawn amount, you will have to do this. And the next one, which is 15th one, credit for R can be defined as the expected loss of the portfolio. No, that's wrong. Threshold level of portfolio, unexpected loss at a given level of confidence, that's also incorrect. Difference between A and B, which means expected loss of the portfolio minus threshold level, that's also incorrect. What is correct? Threshold level of portfolio, unexpected loss at a given level of confidence minus expected loss of the portfolio that's the answer so the answer would be b and a first you will take this and from here you will deduct this this will be minus right and you will reach to credit one i hope this video made some sense for you and you like this thank you so much for watching do not forget to subscribe the channel and like this video thank you so much